Hi, how are you doing? This is a. Uh, I thought I'd give another dose of online av geek madness. It's um, it's Friday night. Um, just been thinking about maybe doing something a little bit different, doing a, an online av geek week, a roundup of the uh, the kind of aviation lowdown in the lockdown. Um, just sort of looking through social media really and uh, checking out what's been in the news and giving my a personal spin on it. I, re I realise not everyone has uh, has a massive social media network or. Or even a massive, you know, in, interest in being on social media. So I thought I'd do a quick, a quick video to to make sure that no one's missing out on what's been happening out there, um, and just seeing how things go. So um, this is the uh, a little news program we've put together. That I'm now going to go into showing you a little bit about what's been going on on the AvGeek Week. So this is yeah AvGeek Week, the lowdown and the lockdown. And one of the first things I wanted to, to highlight was the gorgeous new colour scheme of the, uh, this blue phantom of the Japanese Air Force. Obviously it's 301 for the time, um, the, the last Japanese phantom unit, and they're going to be disappearing from our skies in December. Um, it's, it's brand new, this has come out this week, the scheme is absolutely gorgeous. And one of the things that's particularly nice about the Japanese scheme is the attention to detail. So all along those steeple records all across there, there's, there's messages, there's uh, squadron symbols related to the history of the unit, the history of the aircraft, and the Japanese Air Force as well. It's gorgeous. I love the scarf going along the, uh, the fuselage spine as well, that relates to the frog of the uh, insignia of the unit as well. So um, there's a couple more images of it when it, Hikuri announced its presence. It goes alongside with the 301 special, which is the, uh, the yellow one, and the blue one, the new one, uh, just celebrates the whole Phantom career in, in the Catholic Air Force self defense service. So, this is from the Hikuri uh, Airbase Twitter feed. I'm pretty sure, I, I, unfortunately, I don't read uh, Japanese too well, but I'm pretty sure that says that coming over to see this is essential travel and everyone's allowed to do it. But um, don't take my word for it. We'll have to wait and see, and hopefully, that. We get some good, good, uh, good news coming in the months ahead to be able to go out and see this absolutely gorgeous aeroplane, and it is gorgeous. Look at the detail. I love the hybrid shark's mouth, the hybrid mark, the Phantom Forever. Obviously, they have spelt that wrong. It should be PH, of course, for Phantom Forever, but I will absolutely let them off. And to be able to see those two jets flying together is uh, is going to be surely one of the highlights of the Avgeek year, let alone the Avgeek week. Um, there's also rumours of another special still to come as well, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, elsewhere, Boeing, on the more official industry news, the, uh, the maiden flight, flight of the first Boeing F-15QA for Qatar, and this jet is said to be the most advanced uh, F-15 ever built, which is quite something. And uh, interestingly, in the YouTube fields there, I've got uh, the, the, the aircraft called the Zoom Climb, which uh, Boeing named Viking Climb, which is a new one made, certainly. Um, now, throughout this you'll see that I've just done stills and what, the idea is that I want you to get into perhaps following new people and seeing new people that are out there and what they're doing, so this is from the Boeing Twitter feed. Um, and I'm also just going to show you a few bits of obviously what's been happening out there outside those windows. Um, this is the scene right now above my house in Farnborough in Ulster. Um, not a lot going on in the south of England, it's pretty much zero in Scotland apart from perhaps a couple of oil uh, support helicopters and even the airspace over New York is dead so it's uh, just quite remarkable to see things like that at the moment. Uh, elsewhere on the civil front there was um, China Airlines in Taiwan have come up against some public confusion and concerns about their name um, so they're actually looking to rename themselves they maybe go into the Taiwan Airways or uh, Taiwan Airlines or indeed Formosa Airlines the original name. Um, they want it to be made absolutely clear that the airline represents Taiwan and not China so that's quite interesting. Um, also, another uh, interesting commercial side of things, we saw the, uh, the world's largest aeroplane, the, the Antonov 225 Miriam Dream. Um, it flew into Warsaw and brought 100 tonnes of medical supplies and gowns and face shields and everything else to, as, they, as Poland starts uh, to really ramp up their, their medical supplies in, in the fight against Covid. Now, this was particularly significant because it's obviously an amazing aeroplane to see. Uh, and certainly the, our, our Polish friends, all of the enthusiasts, they've got very, very strong enthusiasts community over there. Um, all, all flock to see uh, this air, air, <laughs> beautiful aeroplane at Warsaw, which is uh, quite interesting to see indeed. Um, another interesting fact, this, this guy, uh, Stefan, on, uh, on Twitter is well worth a follow. Some of the things he uncovers are, are quite remarkable. Well worth a follow on there. And he, there's uh, one of his recent tweets this week, how North Korea have, uh, have been revealed perhaps to, to be 
using depleted uranium cores on R60 missiles. It's uh, definitely one for more esoteric Agni kind, but it's a very interesting account to follow. Uh, Warbird Digest, one of the finest uh, Warbird sources of news and material, they, they did a report this week on as if things weren't bad enough, right? Uh, a huge storm whipped through and uh, really caught the Berlin Air Life Foundation C-54 quite badly. There's actually a lot of damage in the whole re region and if anyone's particularly interested in supporting this cause, um, then Mo, a good friend of ours, the, uh, the editor of Warbird Digest, has given a, a link to their Spirit of Freedom organisation to help uh, donate to restore this air to repair the damage, so worth, worthwhile cause there. Uh, the Warzone, always worth a follow, uh, one of the, the leading internet uh, news agencies out there for, for Ampit. Um, they broke the story of this, it was uh, incredible to see that uh, the, the, the huge industry now that the kind of contract progresses. Um, Air USA have bought an unbelievable amount, 46 Hornets, uh, ex Australian Hornets, for use in the aggressive role, so there's a good story there on Warzone for you to check out. Um, there's also a news break today, uh, yesterday I think it was, of a uh, Russian Navy jet buzzing a Navy, US Navy P8 Poseidon uh, in the Mediterranean. So I've moved it probably from the, the Crimea area down there. And uh, the, the statements were that it was within 25 feet uh, and the intercept lasted 42 minutes now. 25 feet is incredible. I don't know if you've heard that's like really literally under the wind, you know, really dangerous stuff. So I'd be yeah, interested to see if, the, if there's ever any tapes released of that because um, I think it's quite easy to perhaps misinterpret distances, etc. Um, especially for a large aeroplane, so and I think it is huge. So it'd be very, very interesting to see if there's ever any footage to come out of that, that's for sure. Um, more warbird news the, there's a new Grumman Bearcat being, being restored. The, um, the Plains of Fame Museum uh, obtained this aircraft uh, about 12 years ago after it was damaged in the takeoff. Act. In 1993, so there's some good work, good news coming out of the Warbird community there as well. Uh, so perhaps not so sad, not so good news, but it's sad to see these beautiful queens of the skies uh, now unfortunately being apart. We've already lost the, the jets from KLM, albeit they are using the freighter roll still, but uh, the BA jets, the beautiful 747-400s now have been parked up and uh, the summit Bournemouth and the summit Oxford Airport, this is the Oxford Airport Twitter feed, but it's worth the worth check and seeing what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and we can only hope it's a temporary measure, but um, my fears are that one, we, we may not see the fair effect to come back, but certainly I hope, I hope they do. Okay, so Chris Bolton is a fascinating account on Twitter. Um, really digs some amazing photographs out. This one in particular, I mean, you can look at that shot for just to be absorbed for it for hours on end. There's a lineup of Swedish dragons there with the one uh, outstanding, very good, see what you did there. Back in the middle, and uh, his, his accounts fascinating. Some of the photographs he covers are, are well worth a look. This being another one, an unbelievable sight of brutish scimitar landing, uh, coming in for a carrier arrested landing. Uh, this week also saw 14th April 1986, the uh, anniversary of El Dorado Canyon, uh, with the late F 111 there, 48 feet to and being ready for that mission. And elsewhere, kind of in those historic close of the days type aeroplane stuff, we get uh, 41 Retro Count. Uh, great for old school Jaguar stuff. Um, obviously, the, the Gulf War Jaguar is there, and a good friend of ours, Rich Pittman, is, is going back through his archives, aren't we all, to see what we, how we used to do things, what we used to see, and just reliving the moments of, of better days. And that's one of my particular favourites of Richard's shots. He, he, he lives pretty close to the open, so um, being able to get out. <coughs> watch this Shah's uh, just do circuits at Yelts in, in that kind of weather and that kind of light is a, is a classic shot to of course, so I had to highlight that. Of course the indomitable Jamie Hunter on, on Instagram, uh, just an, an, a truly remarkable sight of the flick knife, the, uh, the tornado F3 there, 56 run. Ah, just beautiful, beautiful sight, wing swept and uh, over the English countryside, so I had to highlight that as well, cracking shot thank you. Uh, talking of amazing hit shots in beautiful light, look at that, a Spanish Air Force uh, pair of Hornets and a, and a very interesting twist of feet. And to get that lighting with those colours, um, I mean, it's, it, what I would have loved to have seen is if obviously the middle was orange and the top two were red so that it could be done with like the Spanish flag there, but uh, definitely worthy of a highlight. Uh, Tyler, Tyler Rogway is uh, head of the uh, war zone in the States and he uncovered some amazing stories. So, 
well worth the follow on his Twitter. Um, and this is probably one of the better things that's come out of China recently, being this uh, amazing J20, which is set against the settings. Uh, Tyson, I'm very pleased to see that you're uh, get it going back into your archive. Tyson's, in my opinion, one of the finest photographers out there. Um, and again, well worth following his, uh, his accounts in the tprphotography.com. Check out his previous work. He doesn't do so much stuff now in the aviation world, which is a shame, but he's a very busy guy working in the, uh, in the marine zoos over in the States. So he does great work, but uh, he certainly did great work back in the day with airplanes as well. So um, great to see you reliving those archives, mate. Thank you. Uh, another one worth checking out is the RA Photographer account on Facebook. They're, they're having regular takeovers at the moment. Um, one of my personal ones that I really found quite interesting was that they delved into the photographers in, in number 10 uh, down in three. So they kind of followed what how their uh, what their days are, what the day in the life is of the photographers there, and sort of talked through the daily briefings they have to undertake and what they have to do within those closed doors to, to open new immortals. So that was fascinating to see. And obviously the R is playing a huge part at the moment in delivering aid and, and making sure everything is running smoothly for our frontline forces as well. So some really good, interesting stories, not, not just about the photography experience, there's definitely the stories of the as well, well worth the following. Um, Skies Magazine, the great guys over in Canada, they uncovered this beautiful, air, as they called it, airplane therapy. Stunning uh, video from Match Productions, uh, it's well worth it though. If you're into your commercial aviation or your video, or you just like good footage of aviation, then this is absolutely worth a check out. And again, I'm not, this isn't about playing it because I want you to go and follow these guys and uh, enjoy the videos. Uh, the Warzone mentioned Tyler earlier. Tyler uh, breaks some great stuff, and the Warzone is his baby. And this is incredible. And we've all followed the, uh, the, the amazing uh, shots we've seen of Area 51 and the craziness of the alien highways out in the States, out in Nevada. Um, and it's truly an amazing place to see. You can get very close to it now, especially since the land grab took back the last public areas. You get, uh, get up the mountain now, it's a long way out. I think we're talking miles and miles and miles. But this guy, uh, featured in this story, flew over the area from very close, and even the, uh, the fabled bootstrap um, S4, and took some, some of truly the most powerful photographs yet. I mean, that's quite a claim, right? There's some great stuff from free to read back in the day. But this guy flew over the top and has taken some enormous high res images. And you can zoom into your heart and you don't sort of see anything contentious or anything else like that. But um, oh my goodness, they, you can get lost in those images, and that is well worth checking out. Uh, this was also worth checking on the BBC news. Uh, obviously, there is so much news on the BBC, so much news everywhere, all of the time. But this in particular, uh, just out of the, the, the headset of uh, COVID and all the disaster that we're facing at the moment, this is really cool to just get lost in and let your, your mind wander a little bit. Um, Apollo 13 enhanced images with real life on the strip of space club. It's really fascinating to see, so that's well worth well, well, check out. Hopefully, that's really cool on any of the news. Um, I thought this was quite cool because uh, just to highlight some of the stuff we can do with our aviation images while we're in lockdown. Um, thoroughly recommend Blur. They're, they're a great company um, to do your uh, book that they turn. You can download the software, you can put the images into the software, create your own books, your own magazines, um, hardback, softback, different types of paper, etc. It's great fun and a really creative way to, to have images on the desk instead of the hard drive. So that's well worth it checking out we've got a little bit of spare time. Um, this was good fun. Um, there was a, a pair dressed up as a Spitfire and which was met in uh, Dorrington, asleep in Lincolnshire. Uh, a pair lift locked down to the in the Lewis Village fly park. They, they literally dressed up and did a, uh, a fly pass on the Lewis Street. Classic British humor. Um, this one is, is also very interesting. Um, it was from a, a, a TikTok account originally, uh, the, the real Californian Tom Cruise. Um, I believe it's since been taken down, so you might be might be lucky to just can't find it somewhere. But basically, it's a, a dude in full pilot gear, full mask on, helmet, everything, um, going and doing the shop. It's an extreme COVID protection with that. Uh, this. It's awesome, I love it. Uh, this is Jamie and I's new creation. Uh, Jamie Hunter and I on the Aviation Barbecue. Uh, just basically meat and jets. Uh, there will be other subjects, of course, but uh, the, the, the main flavour of it is meat and jets. 
a brand new YouTube channel with Jamie and I talking about the current affairs or specific topics and bringing in subject matter experts uh, where we can to talk about those top topics whilst eating ribs and wet burgers and steaks and chicken and hot dogs. It's awesome and we're really looking forward to seeing that growth. So please do join it, have a look at the two episodes we've done so far. First episode was on uh, Top Gun, second episode was on the Red Arrows and the third episode is due out soon so I want to tell you to get up and say check it out the Aviation Bar and see what that's all about. One of my highlights this week was the, uh, the, the car online aviation pub quiz that we t- uh, t- undertook yesterday. It was, it was amazing. Great, great fun. And it astounded me how, how many people it engaged. It didn't me. It's the reach of it was nearly 16,000. And uh, it's like 5,000 people participated in our quiz. So very much looking forward to doing another one. It'll be uh, next week. Uh, it might not be quite so long. Uh, we might do some short, quick fire rounds of like 10 questions, bang, 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 and we'll get the answers in. And like I said, in the future, we promise that there'll be a leaderboard of prizes, etc., etc., once our, our actual client online site goes live, which we're all very excited about indeed. So finally, on the Avgeek week, I couldn't go uh, without showing you the prize Avgeek. <laughs> this is me in the 1990s. We had to be at a had to look out some old photographs of ourselves uh, talking about what got us into aviation. So um, this was a particularly amusing find. Uh, this is me at Upper Hayford, uh, yeah, in the early 1990s, maybe mid 90s actually. Uh, and I believe I've got the, the classic uh, that's a metal case there with a couple of camera bodies. Um, and obviously the black one is full of my lunch. Great days. All right, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll do another one next week. Cheers for now.